All right, so let's pull up the chart real quick. All right, Halloween was last night. We're going through this T-square today with the nodes of fate and the moon. We just come out of the new moon in Scorpio about a week ago. So the first quarter square. Hmm. How does that play out for you? You know, what are you going through right now? What are you doing? How are you feeling? Today is uh, recognition and maybe some nervous tension, some energy put to form. Now the moon squared the sun, Venus, and the node earlier today, or within the past 24 hours. And a lot of square energy is like unconscious when it's from within you. But a lot of the unconscious aspects of what we are, what we do, is um, from external dynamics, epigenetics, loops, you know, dynamics that you are growing through. So there are those uh, times when they come up where you feel like you are making choices, decisions, following a path, going with a flow. We see, see here that the moon is about to make a conjunction with Saturn. Saturn is time, space, form. Aquarius is the uh, Uranian field, but it is also the, um, the collective. It's almost like the collective conscious, whereas uh, Pisces is the collective unconscious. So it is coming to grips with um, loops, the autonomy of the self, your sovereignty in relation to the shit show world you got going on around you, where it's okay to lie, cheat, steal, kill, maim, torture, so long as it is um, for a good cause. And then we got the dramas of our own lives playing out, you know, which supersede the insanity, which is why the insanity goes on. Because until you're out of your own subjugated, subjectified shadow uh, loops, you can't really care too much about how shady all the powers that be are. Psychopathy uh, rises like a yeast in society. But it's um, a symptom of a deeper issue, which is the wound we all carry in, in life. That's how we learn. So we have Mars went retrograde on the 30th, still at that 25 degree point. There's going to be a lot of trining action with Saturn. Soon. Maybe um, after the uh, Taurus full moon. I didn't look at the chart, but 
I'm just freestyling going with the intuition right now. In the middle of Gemini is the north node of Uranus range. Uranus and uh, Saturn came to the last of three squares here. Three quarter squares. So we're heading into a balsamic phase conjunction between Saturn and Uranus. Mars, very personal planet. Your passion, your desire, your... Um, will a lot of ways the primordial fire you know your soul's um, energy you can think of the sun as your um, energetic being the the spirit you hold within you and Mars is one of the ways in which you put that into will, put that into action. Gemini is very cerebral. Mercury is in Scorpio. Ancient ruler is Mars of Scorpio. So we've got this mutual reception going on. Saturn strong here. And I don't believe um, when planets come into aspect, I don't think there is a... Um, I think it's important to think of the phases and dynamics. Like there are elements that... Uranus holds which Saturn puts into form and there are elements of um, Saturn, the tradition which Uranus brings into form and there's like a retreading of energy. There's many ways that the dynamics of life can play out. I mean, we already know there's going to be monetary we're already seeing value changes in the world with the way we think, our ideas, our ideologies. Some people have insane ideologies and I don't value them. I value what I feel is right and I, su I um, suspect most people are like that, I hope. So the value of the mind, the value of health, your body, <laughs> the value of personal autonomy, sovereignty, to make your own choices, your own informed choices. But that takes work, you know. You gotta research, you have to use your senses, not just the mind. So you got to get into your emotions to get there, you know. You have to conquer the demons within. You have to understand that you have been traumatized in life, but it's up to you to heal yourself. And the way you do that is by living. Not watching everything pass by. I noticed an interesting pattern the past few months. Each new moon... The preceding um, full moon is in an inconjunction to that previous new moon. So there's this weird solar lunar dynamic going on here. And I believe that's indicative of the Venus being reborn here into the evening star and Mars going retrograde. There's an inconjunction, uh, inconjunction here between Scorpio and Gemini as well. And this square from Saturn to the Scorpio-Taurus axis uh, puts spirit to form, puts tension to form. So the world's happening, now it's up to us to happen. How that is, I don't know. You just do the little things, I suppose. 
you have to work towards something that you want to create within yourself, within this world. I mean, we're going to regardless. Might as well um, engage with life. All right, so um, now that we talked about this real quick, I kind of wanted to just talk about theory for a moment, astrological theory. I've got this inner wheel here. See this? This is standard Western tropical. It's very personal, you know. Um, Western tropical is geocentric. You know, that's where I am, so that's where I'm looking in relation to all the energies that are affecting me. Yeah, my parents are special. They brought me into this world, but I don't base my value, my life off of their lives. They're individuals just like I am. And so the sun is important, but I'm looking from the earth because that's where I am. So I like Western tropical. That's the inner wheel. Now, sidereal is this outer wheel. What um, Any system you learn can give you the same information, but it's the spirit of the information that changes for me, and that's why I, um, I like to learn many different things and try and find that. The last bit of truth which doesn't die is a static. The last aspect of the dynamic um, value of information. Once it settles into being a canon of some form or a stone on a path, that's when it's devalued. So, side so your wheel out here. Um, Western tropical in here. The way I, I think of sidereal in terms of how I value that system is that I see it as a point of origin type of energy. I won't say it's past life, but it is a, um, it's a progression of energy, so spirit to form. You know, they say when you look in the sky, the light is millions of years old, sometimes older. And it took that long before it hit your eye, before it was recognized by you. So siderially speaking, when you look at someone's chart siderially and you compare it to tropical, tropical is the here now, sidereal is the essence of the spirit coming into this form. That's how I look at it. Furthermore, when I think of the actual house system, coach versus uh, porphyry, <laughs> porphyry, Porphyry um, sets some of my planets uh, back, actually. As opposed to coach. So in Porphyry, I have a seventh house moon. But in coach and Placidius, I have an eighth house moon. So analyzing my experiences in life, the static of my history so that I can uh, value the system I can see where coach seems to be a more static house system in that it shows more of the origin the uh, the imprint of the energy coming into form and porphyry to me seems more dynamic it is more future leaning so looking at my life, how I've um, come up in this world, I'm becoming more um, seventh house moon. And then that reaches back into the origins of the spirit. If you want to look at the sidereal, I have a lot of um, a Libra rising in sidereal and uh, Taurus sun moon in the eighth. So Rohini Moon. I haven't studied all the various um, aspects and systems, but I know there's some useful information, useful tools in all systems. 
So when you're learning something, um, if you prefer to learn one set method, then do that. If you prefer to learn bits and pieces like me, then do that. You know, we're all sharing ideas and perspectives, you know, and if everyone has the same perspective and everyone's reading the same books, it's going to be kind of a boring conversation. You know, if you don't have anything to learn, then you better question yourself. <laughs> you should question whether or not you're a student or a teacher. Because in my philosophy, only a student can be a teacher. So if you just settle on one thing, you're just limiting yourself. And we've seen that information in society. People taking um, the professional's perspectives into account over their own because they agree with an ideology about how things should be rather than how things are. You know, we all learn, but sometimes when we're making collective choices like that, it impacts everyone, and then we get these uh, shyster, shadow people at the top taking advantage of our ignorance. It's not accountability, it's focus energy. Think of yourself in relation to the world and others. Don't put the world above yourself or you are doomed and you doom others with that mindset. Because uh, if you do well for yourself, you're going to do well for this world. And by doing well for yourself, it's putting energy into your conscious awareness of yourself. Learning your own value. That's what these times are. And oftentimes, you know, it's just a question of can we, are we willing to accept our value? Are we willing to accept that we may have been wrong, that other people may have been wrong? Or are we willing to accept that maybe what was uh, right at one time is now wrong because we're dynamic? We're seeing a shutter effect. The world's acting insane. People are going nuts, you know, because the world is not a healthy place. That doesn't mean you dwell in that knowledge just because you acknowledge it. It means that now you have a scale, a range here. If you want to impact that scale, you know, you got to take care of the self first. Because if you need handouts, who are you going to help? And that's handouts of monetary, physical, mental, spiritual. You know, when you're going through hard times, you got to take and do and use whatever options you have available to you. And I think it's a lot more simple than we give it um, credit for as far as the solutions go. Nature, that's probably the biggest um, tool for recovery. Getting out of the shit show loops. Resetting to baseline. Finding what that is. Understanding what that is for yourself. You gotta be in a place where the reflection isn't skewed by someone else's trauma. Nature reflects authenticity. But we all 
buy into these lies and these narratives and these stories because uh, there's too much evidence to back it up. There's too much evidence because once you start to believe in something, other people believe in it and it spreads. That's why people don't like going to a doctor. They ain't there to prescribe hope. You gotta get out of static systems, static ways of thinking and being. And I think with these energies, we're going to, whether we want to or not. But the sun is on the axis of power dynamics. Exchange, energy exchange. You eat junk food and you get unhealthy. You eat quality food and you become healthy. It's a weird thing in these times that such common logic is hard to find. And we've all gone through these kind of weird things. I'm not saying I'm immune. But there's a foundation that's changing. Value at all levels. Value of knowledge. All right, so what are you gonna do for this Taurus full moon? Neptune might help with that. So when the moon crosses over Neptune, maybe in a day, a little over a day, you might have some kind of an understanding of something, some intuitive impulse. Or maybe um, you've been pulling up something for a long time and you start to see the shape. All right, well, that's all I wanted to talk about. Thanks for watching. <laughs>